she was stripping away anything that would really date the movement or the, um, the dance that she was creating. She was trying to get down to the elemental, the, the essence of lament or the essence of joy. The Martha Graham Dance Company, now in its 88th year, presents her work much as it was originally, as in these three performances of Appalachian Spring. They use costumes and set pieces, often designed by Graham herself. So, it was a particularly existential disaster when Hurricane Sandy hit and the Hudson River poured into their storage area. We really only had six days, maybe seven days, to get everything out before it would become a health hazard. Almost 5,000 costumes and our sets and audio tapes and posters and everything. This cape is Electra's cape. This is the original from 1958. The cape was folded like this, so these red fingers just bled right onto the background. I'm Gabe Johnson, reporting for the New York Times, and I visited their space in the West Beth Community Arts Building in New York City, the former space of the Merce Cunningham Dance Company. Graham, of course, wanted to emphasize the torso and wanted to emphasize the woman's sexuality in this piece. So. Classic, classic ground. Mm -hmm. Subtle and yet not. <laughs> can you show me a representative move, something you can do in this limited space here? Now the death of a founding choreographer presents an existential challenge for any dance company. After Merce Cunningham died, for instance, his dance company created a trust, went on a farewell world tour, and ultimately shut down operations, all according to his wishes. Graham's company, however, has persevered and is preparing for a new season, aptly named myth and transformation. The dress was originally designed by the principal dancer Helen McGeehee for the first production of Clytemestra in 1958. The story of Electra's dress, how it has changed and how it stayed the same, reflects the story of the Martha Graham Dance Company itself, its evolving relationship to her legacy and her vision. So we don't try to freeze the dances and sort of show museum pieces. Martha Graham lived long enough to change and adjust her ballets for the artists who were performing them. So because Blakely is taller than the original Electra, this is the kind of adjustment that uh, we need to make to, to keep the theatricality powerful. The thing that she wanted to hold on to was that emotional center. She wanted that to remain powerful. And she knew that one way to keep it powerful was to use the athleticism, the new athleticism. I have that guide from Martha to let our 21st century athletes be 21st century athletes, not try to, to make them dance like the dancers of the 1950s. This is her entrance in the final section. Miss Eilber has pared down Clytemestra from an evening's performance to a single act. Most of the costumes have been altered, if not replaced by replicas, or, as is the case with headdresses, entirely new designs. So the light will catch a different pattern, uh, and uh, so it's not just like a band. It also features two premieres by outside choreographers, but Miss Eilber maintains that while some direct links to the past have been lost, their move to West Beth has connected them to something even more elemental. What the space in our big studio does for our dancers and the art, it brings it to a different level. It forced us to look at what we had and decide its value. So in a way, that hardship also released a lot of creativity.